Now this is the pair Surat Al-Munafiqoon and Surat Al-Taghabun. And Surat Al-Taghabun is the most comprehensive surah of Quran regarding Iman. Iman actually is the subject matter of the Makki surahs. But here in 18 ayat, what is Iman? First the three main articles of faith, then a passionate call to have Iman. Then, what are the fruits of this tree of Iman? So that you can see whether you have Iman or not. And then, again a passionate appeal to fulfill the requirements of Iman. So four parts of this surah. Two things, Iman and a call for Iman in the first section. What are the fruits of Iman? And what are the responsibilities of Iman? They are the subject of the second section. But here you must understand, one Iman is against, opposed to Kufr. One Iman is opposed to Nifaq. Kufr, you know, have two, two stages. An open Kufr, which is legally Kufr, a person is legally out of the pale of Islam, that is a Kafir, non-believer. And then this is also Kufr, hidden Kufr, that is Nifaq. So here actually, the Iman as opposed to Nifaq has been discussed here. Because these surahs, as I told you in the very beginning, they are addressing the Muslims only. Among the Muslims, there are Muslims, true Mormons, the hypocrites, not Kufar, open Kufar are not there. So here it is in opposition to Nifaq. So first Nifaq was discussed and now Iman. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. Everything which is in the heavens and everything which is in the earth glorifies and will continue glorifying forever Allah سبحانه وتعالى. لَهُ الْمُلْكُ We had twice in سورة الحديد لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Twice in the first six ayat here لَهُ الْمُلْكُ to him belongs the kingdom or the sovereignty. And also all praise belongs to him. And verily he is powerful over everything. These four ayat, you know, the six ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. And that is the first among the Musabbihat. <coughs> and among the Musabbihat, this is the last. Six ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. And here are four ayat. He is the one who created you. Who create, created you all. فَمِنْكُمْ kafirun. Some of you are unbelievers. وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنْ And some are the believers. How come? The unbelievers were also created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The logic would say that they should also believe in Him. But the actual state of affairs is that some of you believe, some of you don't believe. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. Whatsoever you are doing, Allah is seeing. Khalaqa samawati walanda bil haq. He created the heavens and the earth with a purpose. Pasawarakum. And He shaped you, fashioned you. Fahsama sawarakum. How beautiful a shape He has given to you. Wailahil Masir, and to him will be the return. Ya Alamu Maafis Samawati Wallah. Three dimensions of Allah's knowledge in one ayah. Number one, Ya Alamu Maafis Samawati Wallah. He knows everything which is in the heavens and the earth. Number two, Wa Ya Alamu Maatu Siruna Wa Maatu Lenun. And he knows what you conceal and what you reveal. And number three, وَهُوَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ He knows whatever is in the hearts and chests. Now what is the difference between number two and number three? Whatever you hide, you conceal, Allah knows. That is in your heart. Then why this repetition? I kept on thinking this on this issue for a long time. Then it was clear to me that this is a separate third dimension. And that is the dimension which we know which we call subconscious mind. We don't know our subconscious mind. 
One thing is that I am consciously hiding something. I know it. That is in my knowledge. I am hiding it willfully, intentionally. But there is a level of my mind which I don't know even. And that is my subconscious mind. Allah knows your subconscious mind also. So He knows everything which is in the heavens and the earth. He knows what you conceal and hide and what you say openly. And He knows what is in the chest. Now these four ayats are discussing the person and attributes of Allah. Now the institution of messenger, messengerhood. Alam yatakum nabaw lazina kafaru min qabul. Have not the news of those who disbelieved in the past came to you? Now this is the Madani Surah. And in the Makki Surahs, all these news, Ambaw Rasul, the people of Hud and people of Nu and people of Saleh and people of Shweb and the Sodom and Gomorrah townships and so on and so forth. And, and you know, Firaun and his armies. Alam Yatekum. Now here is the only question. It means that you have already come to know. The news of those who disbelieved in the past. So they tasted the evil consequences of their conduct and behavior. That was in this world that they were destroyed. But a painful chastisement is there for them waiting in the hereafter. This happened because to them their messengers kept on coming. Fakalu, but they kept on saying, Will a mortal human being guide us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, He should have sent some angel. Why a human being? Just like us. Fakafaru. On this basis, they disbelieved. Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also turned away. Because He was in no need of them. Wallahu aliyyul hamid. And Allah is self-sufficient. He has no need with anybody. And He is praiseworthy. These two ayat. The biggest hindrance in the way of people to accept the messengers has been this. That if they are messengers of Allah, how could it be that they are men? They should have been angels. They denied the messengerhood on the basis of the human character of those messengers. But later on this disease has appeared among the followers of the messengers of Allah. That they deny that the messenger is not Bashar. He is something else. How can a messenger be a Bashar, a human being? So this is the same disease taking the about turn, you know. In that condition, they denied that because they are Bashar, they cannot be messengers. And who has accepted as messengers, they say because they are messenger of Allah, they can't be Bashar. So it's the same disease. Zamal Lazina Kafaru Basu. Now the third article of faith, and that is of resurrection. Those who disbelieve assert that they will not be raised again. Now note the words of the emphasis. Pull, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bala, why not? What of me, and I swear by my Lord, Latu wa you will definitely be raised again. Summa latuna bauna bima amiltum. And then you will be told what you had been doing. Wazalik alallahi yaseer. And this is very easy on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in seven ayat we have four for the attributes of Allah. Two for the institution of messengerhood. One but very forceful one for the Iman bil Akhirah of the resurrection. Now comes a call. Fa'aminu billahi wa rasulihi. These are the facts. Whether you accept them or you deny them, the fact will remain as it is. Allah is there. This institution of Messenger would have been there. And the resurrection, the resurrection is going to take place. But if you want, Success for yourself. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Have faith and iman and belief in Allah and His Messenger. وَالنُورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا And also have belief in the light that He has sent down. That is Quran. 
Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. And whatever you are doing, Allah is aware of it. Yawma yajma'ukum li yawmi jam'i zalika yawmu ta'abun. The day when he will gather you all on the day of gathering. That would be the day of the decision of success or failure. Taghabun. The decision as to who failed, who succeeded. That they will decide. You might have been an emperor in this world. But if you are thrown in the hell, you have failed. You are doomed. You might have been a very poor person in this world. But if you are saved on the day of judgment and admitted to the gardens of paradise, you are successful. Success doesn't depend upon these worldly belongings, gains, positions, wealth, nothing of the sort. Success. Whosoever succeeds on that day is successful. Whosoever has failed on that day is the failure. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ التَّغَابٌ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ Now this is the explanation of that تَغَابٌ Whosoever will have faith in Allah وَيَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا And do good deeds يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّعَاتِهِ Allah will expunge from His record His shortcomings وَيُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتِ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعَاتِ الْأَنْهَارِ And will make them enter the garden under which rivers will be flowing خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا To abide therein forever, forever. ذَلِكَ الْفَضُ الْعَظِيمِ This is the biggest success. On the other hand, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا As for those who disbelieved and belied our revelations, أُرَائِكَ أَسْحَابُ النَّارِ They are the dwellers of the fire. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will remain in that forever. وَبِيسَ الْمَصِيرِ and definitely it's a very evil destination. Here the first section ends. Seven ayat, a narration. Four for Allah's attributes. Two, the basic mistake committed by human beings regarding the messengers of Allah. One ayat for the direction. Then in three ayat, a passionate call. Have belief in these things. Now what is the result? If you have true faith and true Iman in you, what conditions should be there in your feelings, in your actions, deeds? So five cardinal effects. Number one, مَا سَعَمَ مِن مُسِيبَةٍ لَا بَيْزْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنْ عَلِيمٍ If you really believe in Allah, then it must be very clear to you that no calamity befalls you except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatsoever comes to you, nothing can come to you without the permission and leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whosoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart to patience and remain pleased and contented with, the, with whatever Allah decides for him. This is what we call in Urdu, Razi Barazai Rab. Whatever you have decided me, I welcome it. Maybe it is unpleasant. Maybe it is painful to me for the time being. But I know it's coming from you, O oh my Lord. You are my friend. You are my protector. You are my supporter. I have trust in you. I have faith in you. So whatever comes from you, I am. Accepting it. This is Razi Baradai Rab. Razai Haq Pe Razi Rehi Harf E Arzu Kaisa. Khuda Khaliq, Khuda Malik, Khuda Ka Hukum Tu Kaisa. Why should you desire something? Leave it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whatever He decides will be the best. Razi Baradai Rab. This is called Maqam E Raza. The station of Raza. Always keeping pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Radhi Allahu anhum wa radhu an. Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No complaint. No complaint. Oh Allah, why you have done this to me? Oh Allah, why this has happened? Oh, nothing of this sort. 
It tells that you don't have faith in him. You don't trust him. Number one. Number two, this is an inward feeling. Whatever comes to you, howsoever painful it might appear to you, howsoever unpleasant it might appear to you, take it and take it with total surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, whatever is from you, it's acceptable to me without any complaint. Now the second is outward expression of this iman. وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَعَطِيُوا رَسُولِ Now obey Allah and His Messenger. Whatsoever is coming to you, you think it is coming from Allah. Whatsoever comes out of you, it should be according to the obedience of the law of Allah. Your hand shouldn't do anything which is not permissible. Your legs shouldn't take you anywhere where Allah doesn't like you to go. Your eyes shouldn't see anything which Allah doesn't like you to see. Your whole existence and everything which is coming out of you, these actions, these deeds, out of your, these organs, they all should be dictated by the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul. فَإِنْ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا عَلَىٰ رَسُولِ الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And if you turn away, then let it be known to you that on our messenger there is no responsibility except that he has to convey to you our message. After that you are responsible. He is not responsible. Number three, tawakkul. Have trust in Allah. Not in the material means, no. although we use the material means, but don't trust them. Don't think anything can be done through these material means. It will happen only if Allah likes it, if He permits it. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah is the one except whom there is no God. So on Allah should put the whole trust those who believe, not on the means, not on your money, not on your own intelligence. Well, use all these things as best as you can, but don't put your trust in it. Now, every human being has these two aspects. Something is coming to him. For that first ayah, Ba Saba bi musibatin illa bezdillah. Woman yumin billah ya de kalba. Something coming out of him, actions, deeds. They should be in the form of obedience to Allah and His Messenger. And about that, total trust should be on Allah, not on the means. Now, every human being is a social being. So there are relationships. He is tied to other human beings with relations. And the most important relations, most dear, are the spouses and the children. Now, what should be the attitude of a truly believing woman? Ya yallazina amanu, inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwallakum fahzaru. Oh, you who believe, verily from among your wives, and your children, there are enemies against you. Fazaruhum, beware of them. Why? This love is a potential danger. Maybe due to this love, you indulge in something which is haram. To get better education for your children, you are adopting haram means of earning. What can I do? I have to pay these fees and this permissible means, they are not sufficient. So what is it having? Then they are your enemies. You are being doomed due to this love. This is the potential love which challenges the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless you Guard, you stand at guard. Take the precautions. Always conscious of it. Beware. There is a danger. Potential danger here. 
this natural love can take you to the wrong path. So guard yourself. Inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwa lakum fazaru. But the family life should not be like this. That you are always angry with your people, your family, always you know quarrelling with them. No. The attitude should be wa in taafu wa tasfahu wa taqfiru. If you keep on pardoning them, overlooking their shortcomings and forgiving them, surely find Allah Ghafurur Rahim. Allah is also forgiving and merciful. Save yourself, but not be harsh to them. Extra harshness breeds rebellion. Leniently, with wisdom. Try to take them on the right path, not with harshness. But save yourself. Don't let their love take you any wrong step. No. There you have to save yourselves. Who unfusakum? Save your, yourselves. But for them, love, affection, leniency, this should be your behavior. In the maamvalukum vaaladum fitna. Verily, your riches. Belongings and your children are a trial for you. Allah is trying you on these. Whether you love these things more or you love me more. Whether you love your children more or you love me more. Whether you disobey me due to the love of your children and wives. Whether you disobey me due to the love of the wealth. So it's fitna. Allah in the huwa azim and the Great reward is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will reward. Not your children can reward you. What reward will, you, will they give you? Allah will give you the reward. Now to conclude, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ So number one, have fear and regard of Allah as much as you can. Number two, وَاسْمَعُوا عَتِيُوا Discipline, listen and obey. Now listen and obey whom? Listening and obeying to Allah and His Messenger has already been mentioned. Watiullah, Watiul Rasul. By this repetition. This is for that party discipline. His Mullah. You have to live as a party. And party cannot be effective unless there is discipline. You have to obey Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also the Amir appointed by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because an organization, a party, you don't have one Amir only. Whenever then there was a battle, you know, the commander in chief was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but on the right wing there was some other commander, on the left wing there was some other commander. So these commanders are to be obeyed. Because they have been appointed by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What happened in Uhud? A disobedience of the commander, local commander. Thirty-five Muslims they disobeyed, and the punishment that came, you know, cost seventy lives to Muslims, including the lives of Hamza radhiyallahu anhu and Musa bin Umair radhiyallahu anhu, and that was a, only a matter of disobedience. That's my wahti. That's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Man atani fagad atallah, wa man asani fagad asallah. Whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. Whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. Whosoever obeys my Amir, appointed by me, whosoever, wa man ata Amiri fagad atani. So he actually is obeying me. Wa man ata Amiri fagad, wa man asa Amiri fagad asani. And whosoever disobeys the Amir appointed by me, he actually disobeys me. So this discipline has to go. Now remember, you know, yesterday, the three surahs, rather four, all the four, from starting from Surah Al-Hadid, then in Mujadala, Muhadda, Hadid, mention of Hadid, weapons, in Surah Al-Hadid, Muhadda between. The party of Allah and the party of Shaitan. Is Bullah? Is Bush Shaitan? Then the same subject 
in Surat Al-Hashr, again the same subject in Surat Al-Muntahina. Here for the first, for last time, Pasma'u wa'atiyo, listen and obey, discipline. Number three, wa'anfiqu, spend as much as, as much as, as much as you can. Khairan li'anfusikum, this is better for you. The more you spend for Allah here, the more you are going to get in the hereafter. You are spending for your own self. You are saving. It's the biggest saving bank of the hereafter where you are depositing your whatever you are spending in the way of Allah. And whosoever is saved from the avarice of his own soul, so those are the prosperers. In Allah Qardal Hasana. Now for the last time here, in the beginning we had مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا In Surah Hadith. Who is that who can give a goodly loan to Allah? Here again. إِن تُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا يُزْعَيْفُ لَكُمْ If you give a goodly loan to Allah, He will multiply it for you manifold. وَيَخْفِرْ لَكُمْ In addition, He will forgive you. وَاللَّهُ شَكُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Allah is appreciating forbearing. If you spend something for him, he appreciates. If you are miser, miserly, you you are acting, then he is forbearing. He doesn't punish you immediately. He gives you time. Alimul ghayb wa shahada, the knower of the seen and the unseen. Al Aziz al Hakim. Again, the two names. Al Aziz al Hakim. Al Aziz al Hakim. He is all powerful. There are no limits. On his authority, but he is all wise. 